All right. Juvenile 17 red belly piranha rescues are ready for their feeding and this time we have a quite a challenge for them as well. <clears throat> I have a large bluegill that my son caught just a couple of days ago. Same day we caught that trout. And uh, now we're going to introduce her into this in uh, juvenile enclosure and see how the hunt will go on. As I said before, it's a substantial one, almost as adult hand size. So let's see how it goes. Whoa, <laughs> I am cut wet. <laughs> Splashed me pretty good. Here comes the bluegill. Bluegill's here. Oh my gosh, what is it? All right, so what do we got? In pursuit, big bluegill. Oh, they're after him. Wow, he is huge. He's bigger than any of the juveniles in the tank, so he will defend himself, I bet. Once again, the size poses a challenge in demobilizing the prey. But they are in pursuit. We got a little bit of a dust kicked up already. Going after the fins. And they're back. Quick regroup. There's a good bluegill temporarily hiding, finding refuge in the dust bowl under the stump on the right hand side. Let's watch as the hunt unravels. Juveniles are amped up, but now seem to be afraid to enter that side of the tank. We'll see how this will go on. Oh, there we go, going back. Large bluegill is, poses a challenge, but they are relentless as they will try to flush them out and begin the attack. Coordinated attack as a pack. Bluegill's so powerful, I can hear them banging against the walls of the glass. They have nowhere to grab on but the anal fins. That's what they're now aiming for. Short fins right at the bottom of the bowel, out in the open. Little gill under attack. Swimming bladder popped. Massive blue gill. And a big pack of piranhas. Here again, that spooky moment where they break up the feeding and last time they, they couldn't go back to it as the bass was floating at the top. It floated away from them. This time they're able to resume. Very, very skittish. You see the feeding itself is kind of a exciting and anxious moment for these guys. 
Making sure the bluegill's still alive. has made his way into the other side of the tank without swimming or any effort of his own. I believe they're finished. They all regrouped, ran off into the refuge, hiding. Whoever didn't get bite, now it's his time, now it's his chance. Bluegill's still alive. Piranha versus Bluegill, even bigger than their own themselves. Ferocious feeding, my friend. Juveniles are devouring Bluegill while he's still alive. This will go on for probably a few more minutes. As I said, the bluegill is still alive. If you have any doubts, So definitely a lengthy feeding, my friends. It's really taking the pack some time to finish this substantial size of offering from Mother Nature, provided by Rome, my son. <laughs> Great adventures and the most best ones are spent together. I think they're still going at it and I think the bluegill's still alive. So 
hard to tell, but yeah, he is. Wow. Not really sure how much of him remains intact, but not much in him. Just a head. Movial's all but done, but still alive. Amazing. Really amazing, truly amazing, my friends. How uh, the piranhas, the takedown, the hunt, feeding and all the way down to, you know, what remains to be just a little bit about a head before the juveniles are finished. Pretty challenging feeding, my friends. And, uh, well, there it is. What's up, my friends? I just got back from a quick shopping and I noticed they're all at the top. Totally distressed, not sure where it is. Well, there it is. Regurgitated bluegill all over. You can see the fragments puked up, just laying about the tank. Don't know what causes it, but yep, there's more, even up top. So they're puking up all of the bluegill. Once again, we're having some issues with them, you know, maybe overeating or that's what it was. I'm not sure, they're, even you can see the coloration of them. There's a distress in their coloration. They have these white blotchy like, you know, bodies and faces and such it's really strange but definitely easy to observe noticeable so all right well, we're gonna keep an eye on them and then we're gonna have to do a water change and scoop out all of these chunks so for whatever reason uh yellow purge now a bluegill caused uh, some sort of you know i don't know abnormal sort of reaction wow never know what to expect with these guys um you saw the distress was substantial. Uh, they devoured the bluegill, you know, managed without a problem. However, aftermath, I have no idea. Once again, just like with the yellow perch, they ended up puking everything out. I took a glimpse of it, you know, I caught a glimpse of it and I showed you real quick. Other than that, it was just a bunch of work of uh, exchanging the water and then fishing out the rest of the little debris that they puke it up, chuck it up. Anyway, for whatever reason, uh, the, bluegill, uh, the bluegill, just like the yellow perch, pose some sort of threat. I don't know, I'm not really sure. I think it has nothing to do with the yellow perch or the bluegill itself, but more with the hunt itself. I believe they simply overfed. The bluegill was huge and they kept coming back and biting and so forth. And I think when they fill all the way, it's just not working out for them. I'm not really sure what would be the reason. Whereas the adults took down the trout without hesitation. It was an awesome fight and they finished it all the way down to the head without any issues. Aftermath was just fine. There was a lot of courtship I caught on camera too. I'll definitely show you that, but nothing out of the ordinary as far as the adults, but the juveniles, yeah. Oh, it was a nearly all nighter. I gotta tell you, uh, my last water change took place this morning at 5.30, about, just about, and that's when I noticed they sort of descended downward and uh, normal again, so to speak. You can still see some of the blotches, color ch ch uh, color change in there. Um, you know, and there, the change, I suppose it is an expression of stress, some sort of stress that they're definitely experiencing. So, hey, as I said before, it's not always, you know, wins and glory. Sometimes it is some unforeseen, you know, failures or whatever, which you gotta be prepared for. Well, there they are. Everything seems to be going back to normal. I'm gonna keep an eye on them for probably a couple more days and no feeding for at least three more days <laughs> until they really come to it. Um, but just wanted to give you kind of a representation or insight to piranha keeping, which doesn't always go as you planned. And with feeding natural and so forth, there's always the risk of not just uh, introducing a parasite or whatever, but the risk of, well, let's just say the pack not being too too excited or for whatever reason not accepting the food 
I know the chub will be well accepted, so of the frog, and the bluegill so far has been a great source of food. So probably gonna have to try it again, maybe with a smaller specimen, and see if that'll help. Um, for now, this is what I got for you. For those of you that are new here, my name is Marek, everyone calls me Bear or Bearski, and this is my cave. This is where I, you know, hang out and be able to show you guys what piranha life is like. I'll see you on the next one. Still struggling a little bit. Hmm. Struggling.